Let's talk about Reagan Magazine. The Alternative Music and Culture Magazine was founded in 1992 and led by the work of David Carson, who served as its art director at the beginning of its formation. Because of this, Carson was credited for pioneering a new graphic design style. Because of his sociology background, he thought a lot about the distinction between reading and understanding, which is why most of the covers and images found in this magazine aren't easily legible nor would they make sense to you if you come from a space outside of and unfamiliar with the culture. He was also the editor of Trans World Skate Magazine and Trans World Snowboarding and Beach Surf Magazine. And that's where he got a feel for the grittiness and had practice with visualizing what you can call the experiential. Carson was comfortable in his style of typography because the magazine was intentionally niche people who would enjoy it would understand the cultural references he would be making. What I love about the imagery most is that it forces you to slow down and examine it to figure out what is being communicated. It may not be immediately aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Rock bands like Nirvana and Nine Inch Nails were regularly featured in the magazine, taking inspiration from the feelings their music gives and details they personally care about to create meaningful insight about the artistry. I'm not gonna stand here and pretend like I know a whole lot about Nirvana and Nine Inch Nails, but what I do know is the immense amount of influence they had on alternative and grunge and rock cultures. And I think Reagan Magazine acted as a sort of melting pot for those cultures to interact with each other and share. That's really what builds upon culture, is the ways in which it can be added to, taken from, understood, and reinterpreted over long periods of time. The magazine played with aspects of space and lines to direct the reader's viewpoints and guide them through the visuals. And this is the part where I think I get the most aesthetic inspiration from, the ability to look at things like negative space and line work depict it visually to make you have an experience as a reader and kind of examine Carson's psychology behind what he was doing. So that's leaning into the conceptions of cheapness and space on the body, but also keeping fabric choices light to bring a levity to what can be synonymous to the humor of Carson's work. So pieces that play with asymmetry and flow so maybe running from one shoulder across to the hip. I think Carson used space as a way to ignite those raw, uncomfortable feelings and see how you can do that in a visual way, whether that's through patterns or maybe that's how you're wearing the clothing item. Maybe you flipped around a regular button up to make this kind of asymmetrical crop top. Throughout Carson's career, he didn't just stick to speaking to one culture and one community. He had collaborations with Nike and Quicksilver that definitely expanded the reach of what he was doing. It happened way after he had made his mark in graphic design, but it still speaks to the fact that he sees an opportunity of untethered interactions with different audiences as a way to also send a message. Although the conditions at the time in the 90s surrounding Reagan magazine made it as experimental and impressive as it looks today, one of its core values was definitely the idea that form sends a message. And in today's day and age, when most of us have the same tool, which is usually a phone or laptop to give your creative message out there, it's great to be able to step back and think about the ways in which you're displaying yourself and if being fully understood needs to be the goal for who you're trying to reach.